again everyone. Welcome to another Twa Togs adventure. Today Ian and I are at Menstrie in Clackman and Shire. So today Ian and I are joined by a special guest all the way from Toronto, Anne-Marie. Hello. I've come all the way from Canada to Scotland to discuss the historical links between our two countries and how they came to be. So I thought as a retired teacher that the best way to test your knowledge would be to give you a little pop quiz, a little true or false, okay? You up to the challenge? Yeah, go for it. Okay. First question. Sir William Alexander was the first Earl of Stirling. True or false? That's easy. True. That is correct. He was born in Menstrie Castle in 1567. What, this castle? Yeah, the one right there. True. That is also correct. He is descended from King Summerled, Lord of the Isles. True or false? True. He was also related to the Vikings, like your husband. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, Hi Austin. Austin. His, his great-grandson, uh, Alistair, formed Clan McAllister. Did you know that? I did. Very good. Oh, yeah, you did. Right, yeah. I did. Um, did you know that the Alexanders anglicized their name from the clan name McAllister. Is that true? Mm -hmm. I'll be second to take note of that there. So let's do a few questions on Sir William Alexander himself. He was a poet. Yes. He helped James VI translate the Psalms. Psalms of David. Yes. He was knighted in 1609. Yes. He was a master of requests in 1614. Yes. He was made a Privy Council member in 1615. Yes. He became Secretary of State for Scotland in 1626, which he served until his death. That's true, yes. He became a Freemason in 1634. Yes. <laughs> Everything is correct. Well done. Ooh. And we're just going to do a few questions now on Sir William Alexander's link to Canada. Nope. He was appointed mayor of Nova Scotia in 1621. True or false? That is true, yes. That is correct. Nova Scotia was enlarged to a barony. True or false? That is also true. Nova Scotia, that is correct. Nova Scotia is Latin for New Scotland. True or false? Yes, that's true, I'm really, yes. Yeah, I think everybody knows that. Yes. A hundred baronets were created to raise funds for the crown and give land in the colonies to the baronets. True or false? That's also true. And each baronet had to support for two years six colonists or forfeit 2,000 marks to the crown. So 2,000 marks then, I mean, was a hell of a lot of money. Just above the minimum wage today, folks. And did you know oh, that oh. in those days, you actually had to physically transfer the land, but that the king and the baronets, neither of whom wanted to make the transatlantic voyage, found a really clever way to get around this. Oh, yeah. And if you actually go to Edinburgh Castle, just outside the walls, there is a plaque that explains just how they managed to do that without travel. And uh, I hear that there's a little video that was made last week to explain how it was done. I'm standing just outside the walls of Edinburgh Castle to start us off on the links between Canada and Scotland. On this spot in 1625, the first Earl of Stirling, whose name was William Alexander of Menstrie, received Cessin, or lawful possession of the Scottish province of Nova Scotia. The custom at the time was that if you wanted to acquire lawful possession of land, you actually had to go pick up pieces of the soil, and none of the baronets, including the first Earl of Stirling, wanted to do the transatlantic crossing, and who could blame them? So what they did is uh, they designated a spot nearby as Canadian land temporarily and they grabbed a piece of soil and so by royal proclamation of King James VI, the baronets and Sir William Alexander, the first Earl of Stirling, 
became landowners in Nova Scotia, which is one of the four original provinces of Confederation, if my history is correct. So you've got a perfect score so far. So last question to, to bring this, the story of the Alexanders to an end. Okay, I'm ready, fire away. <laughs> You're ready? No, not really, but go on. Okay, so two centuries later, Alexander Alexander successfully proved in court that he was the descendant of Sir William Alexander and therefore the rightful heir to become the next Earl of Stirling. Is that true or false? Well, it's not, there's, it is not Earl of Stirling. So you're saying it's false? I'm saying it's false, yeah. That is in fact correct. <laughs> um, Alexander Alexander went to court and the court ruled that his papers were complete forgeries. And so his claim was refused. And you're right, there is no more Earl of Sterling. Perfect score, Jim. Well done. Oh, yes. So I am really pleased to uh, be a little different from the king and the baronets uh, 400 years ago. I did make the transatlantic journey. I'm always happy to make did, the transatlantic yes. journey to come to this great country. And I brought you uh, a soil and water sample mm. that uh, Rush asked a craft brewing company to make on, on behalf of the band. It's uh -huh. called Moving Pictures, and uh, it's, a, it's an anniversary recognition, I think, of 40 years of the, of the record being made. Wow. So there you are. Thank you very much, Admiral. Moving Pictures, excellent. Wow. Admiral. Long may the alliance continue. Yeah, exactly, yes. Well, we've covered a fair wee bit of history in terms of the original uh, movement from Scotland to Canada. Mm -hmm. Come back to King James uh, VI, who was Mary Queen of Scots' son. That's true, Ian, yes. Um, and the settlements in Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. um, through Sir William Alexander. Yeah. So, from there we move on to the... Of, of course, the, after the Battle of Culloden, Ian. Culloden, yeah. We had uh, the Scottish Highland Clearances, mm -hmm. where I think most, if not all, of the crofters and the families were shipped to Canada. Mm -hmm. Some went to probably uh, America. Yep. Uh, and that's again another strong link between Scotland and yep. Canada. And then, and then uh, after, after that happened, a few generations later, you had uh, other waves of immigration to Canada and to America and a lot of Scottish people came in. And you've got to remember that at the time, even, even though America had already uh, become a nation, Canada still hadn't become a nation. In fact, we did not become a nation until 1867. And our first prime minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, uh, was in fact born in Glasgow. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of Scots, uh, Scottish people came to Canada and, and participated in the uh, expansion and, and foundation of, of the country um, and and you, you would find them in in sort of uh, s political life and yeah. as they got more and more educated worked their way up and, and became uh, at all levels of society really yeah. embedded themselves into the the culture of the country yeah, there were some uh, famous inventors as well yeah yeah uh, James Naismith Yes, uh, he was uh, credited with the invention of uh, basketball, even though America America <laughs> claims it as, as their sport. Uh, it was in fact invented by a Canadian, albeit at an American uh, university or college. Mm -hmm. uh, um, with Alexander Graham Bell, uh, yes. who we all know. Famous yeah. Scotsman. Yeah, Famous Scotsman. Telephone. Famous yeah. Canadian. Uh, yeah, uh, well, the, he, it was invented, uh, I believe, in, in Ontario, so... Uh, the, the telephone. Yeah. That's why yeah. our, our phone company is called Bell. Um, so was Alexander Graham Bell Scottish then, and the telephone was invented? And yes, okay. and and he yeah. also um, I I honestly I cannot remember the name of of the, there's a little town on the island of Cape Breton where he kept uh, his entire notes. It's a it's a museum now where you can go see all the things that he invented, all the all the notes and the trials mm -hmm. that 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 the, the, the tests that he did to. To do all, it's a really great museum. I just really wish I could remember the name, and I and I don't at the moment. Okay. Um, we can look that up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so from Alexander Graham Bell, we go oh. to. We have we have famous actors. We have famous uh, public oh, yeah. figures. Yeah. We have Donald Sutherland, 
who, you know, clearly by his name, uh, has Scottish roots. Scot yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, famous musicians who, like Ashley McIsaac, uh, who is from Nova Scotia, the famous fiddler, and he claims Scottish and Acadian roots. Yeah. So not only is there a Scottish Celtic tradition in Canada, but the other Celtic traditions come in yeah. with that. Um, and you see that in Nova Scotia, there's, there's an Acadian population as well as the Scottish population. And so the Celtic, the Celtic traditions are strong in both groups and they, they often uh, and work of together. Of course, Glasgow has the Celtic connection, connections. Every yeah, year, every year, yeah, yeah, yeah it brings has. people together all over. the Celtic connections yeah. from all over the world uh, mm -hmm. and Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, have, uh, we have pipe bands, we have uh, Highland dancing, there are Highland games. Uh, all sorts of things that, that people tartan brought. Days. What's that? Tartan days. Yes, we have tartan yeah, days, tartan days and uh, Canada has its own tartan, Nova Scotia has its own tartan, so uh, we also have Scottish regiments as part of the, the military, as part of the armed forces, um, of which the Queen Mother, who was Scottish, was, was the battalion chief. Yeah. So there, there really is a really rich history. There's also, um, there are also uh, Scots who came to Canada from America following the American War for Independence who refused to, um, they, they refused to give up being British. So yes. they were uh, called the United Empire Loyalists and they settled in, in Ontario. So there are a lot of Scots that, that came from America to Canada to and remain settled then, as, yeah. Yeah, and uh, settled after, after the American War. Yeah. Yeah. So food and drink, what's the link to oh, well, 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 before we move on to musicians, did you know that the singer of Rush, Geddy Lee, is Scottish? Oh, is he? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. He was, uh, well, there's a video. Uh, he's wearing the Scottish attire and he's got a broad Scottish accent. Harry Satchel? That's so, not Geddy Lee, it's Harry Satchel. Uh, Harry Satchel is Geddy Lee, oh, right. so therefore, in my eyes, <laughs> Geddy Lee is a joke. <laughs> And, and, and is very beloved here. Um, he is, oh, yeah, Most yeah, of my yeah. Scottish friends are huge Rush yeah. fans, <laughs> and not, not just for the beers that I bring. Um, we, we forgot one very famous Canadian, yeah. um, John McRae, uh, who is one of our, uh, World War I, wrote the very famous yeah. poem in Flanders Fields. Yeah. If you're ever wandering to the, to the um, Isle of Skye, the Elan Dunan Castle is the stronghold of the Clan McRae, and uh, I do remember the first time we came here in 2001. Just uh, the the castle had closed, but we we went around the perimeter, and I saw the poem. Uh, there was a commemorative plaque, and it it really struck me how how connected we were to this country. Just seeing that um, for the first time, it it really it really hit home that so far away from home there was still this connection to, to Canada. Yeah, good. So food and drink? Ah yes, oh. so, so apparently we are, uh, Scotland is a huge exporter of, of haggis and whiskey. And whiskey. Um, so much so that, uh, Mc, is it McSweeney? Uh, changed the formulation of their haggis to meet the Canadian food standards. Um, Canada makes its whiskey out of rye, uh, we have won international competitions. We spell it the right way as well. Excellent. Um, but yeah, there's there's a there's a big tradition of, of uh, you know there there are burn suppers and and all sorts of, of rituals that that have come from the country. Um, and uh, the, it, we we were just talking before shooting the naming of our streets. I grew up on Campbell Avenue beside Wallace beside Perth. Uh, and Sterling was just just a little bit a few streets south. I just realized I grew up in a Scottish <laughs> neighborhood. So there you go. That explains so the big love. The, and so uh, you were so you were saying about traveling Canadians coming to Scotland. Yeah, there's over a hundred thousand Canadians come to Scotland every year. Some come more than once. Then yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because once you come once, you, yeah, you yeah, can yeah, never you, you, yeah. you always want to come back. Yeah. So. So, Anne-Marie, what's, uh, how many Canadians uh, that would... Scottish descendants? Yeah. They say, they say one in seven, which, which uh, at the population of Canada being, being uh, just over 37 million, it's, it's almost five million people. That's five the same. million people. That's the same population as Yeah, they've got that, yeah. yeah. So, of course, Anne-Marie, you've been coming over since uh, 
2001, yep. isn't it? And yep. I believe that you're you started or halfway through <laughs> writing your travel memoirs. Or... Yes, I'm writing I'm writing a travelogue memoir love letter to Scotland about my time here and how it's evolved from from just coming in 2001 after my father had passed away, knowing no one. Uh, and, and just going through the place uh, as a landscape and falling in love with it to then coming back and then coming back and back and back because we, we made such wonderful friends on each trip, friends that became friends with each other and, and friendships that grew and deepened uh, to the point where um, I, I, I can't imagine not being here on any given year. And I think the pandemic was, 2020 was the only year since we returned in well, yeah, 2014 yeah. that I didn't manage two trips over. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be about that and our adventures nice. and the nonsense we've all been up to and the banter and, you know, hopefully it'll be funny and sweet and, and poignant uh, because I, I really, this is the one place in the world, aside from Canada, where I do feel at home. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think Ian and I felt the same when we were over in, for the first time in 2015 mm -hmm. and we felt that warmth of, of the people we spoke to. Uh, and there's so much like us. Mm -hmm. The only difference that we could see was the accent. Yes. So other than that, they're kind, they're considerate. They're you know, generous. They're, they're generous. They're open. They're funny. They're yeah. wacky. They like a good drink. Yes. They, eat and they I like don't. food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they like so, to have yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're, they're yeah, hilarious. Yeah. yeah. The thing I remember about being in Canada is uh, the amount of people that, when they heard the Scottish accent, came to you and says, "Do you know my great granny Jessie?" <laughs> Well, she uh, lives in Coatbridge. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the same thing here. Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, you know? Do you know my uncle Bob? He lives in Dundas, and yes, I'm like, yes. well, yes. <laughs> and then when you tell them there's five million people in Toronto, they go, oh, maybe not. Right. <laughs> so it's the same. So yeah. your bit, Anne Marie, is. Uh, I mean, so, so what year are you up to now? So you obviously started 2001. I'm at 2015 you're... at the moment. I'm, oh. I'm starting my my spring of 2015 adventures, right, okay. and I know we didn't meet till till 2016, so this is the before Jim and Ian period. The 2016, I'm It's going to be a cracking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> They're actually all cracking because no, everybody yeah, here's yeah, been, yeah, yeah. you know, and I've gotten permission to to, 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 to really... Again, for the Twat Dog viewers, I'm yeah. Marie, this isn't your first book. No. You've actually published four books. I published four books in one, in, in, in a series in of a rock series. fiction, rock fiction. Uh, called Behind Blue Eyes, uh, based, based on, on, a, on a Who song, on the Who song Behind Blue Eyes. And, and just, just to say, again, through the magic of writing and music, some of the friends that I've met here was because I wrote the yeah, book. Yeah, Actually, yeah. most of the people that I've met here was through writing the book and connections from the book. Uh, some of them are Who fans, some of them are writers, some of them are in the music industry or radio industry. Yeah. So it's been, a, it's been a lovely adventure, so it's only right that the next book should be yeah. The Love Letter to Scotland. So it doesn't have a title yet, so if anybody has a great suggestion, I'm hoping it'll, it'll come before the end of the book, what I'm I, sure what will, I should I mean, call it. Yeah, yeah I think will, so too. Yeah. So Ian and I will uh, we'll put a link down below of your Oh, that's very books. kind of you. Um, <laughs> so again, Anne-Marie, it's been utterly awesome having you here. It's been so great. Folks, we've been asking I'm here for years to be on camera and the husband is behind camera. He's the director. The He's Viking director. The Viking director. <laughs> and then when Austin says jump, we say hi hi. <laughs> so again, just to say thank you very much I'm here for no, thank making you. this. This was so wonderful. It's pleasurable. It's been brilliant. It's, it's been great having been, you. Yeah. And we've it's been great. For Maybe lots of good for Austin telling us to do it again. And no, Austin, Austin's, yeah. Austin's He's been brilliant. Yeah. 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 Got the director glasses from yeah. so, from, from Mark. <laughs> so everyone from Anne Marie and from Ian and myself, the Twatogs, thank you very much for watching. Please, if you do like it, give us a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, and stay safe. And come over if you're Canadian. Come over, it's brilliant. It's stay great. safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay yeah. happy. Cheers. Until the next time. Thank you. Bye bye. So I thought as a teacher that the best way we could learn about the links between our two countries is yeah. for me to see what you know by giving you like a little true or false pop quiz. Okay? okay. Ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, miss. <laughs> Thank you for calling me miss. Correct. He was born in Menstrie Castle in 1567. Well, this Menstrie Castle? Yeah, the very one. Okay.
Also correct. And cuff. Menstrual cuff. Menstrual. It's a menstrual. Not menstrual. It's a menstrual. It's a menstrual. I don't know. It's a menstrual castle. Camera's rolling. So, last question on the quiz to bring the story. So, last uh, question on the quiz. Pause, right? Okay. Do it again. Last question on the quiz. So, well done, Jim. That's a perfect score. Thanks, Mark. And, yes. and un unlike King, King James and the Baronet yeah. 400 years ago, 401 years ago, yeah. no, 400 years ago. Yeah, I actually need to, I'll give it to you. Wow. So take it the way that I give it to you and keep it that way. I'll make sure it's turned a little bit. Pictures. Oh no, moving pinches. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Anne Marie. Cut. Yeah. Uh, cut. You stop saying cut. <laughs> cut. And you said pinchers, I not pinchers. Pinchers, pictures. Thank you. I'm going to have to do that last bit again. It's Why? moving pictures. It's pinchers. It's pictures. That is it. No. Pictures. Pictures, pictures, like a pitcher. Pinch. Pinch. No, no, pitch. Picture. 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 Canadian craft beer made. Uh, I blew it again. Okay. What's it in connect in conjunction? No, in partnership. What's the word? Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you very much, Henry. So fast. Yay! <laughs>